Hi everyone, it's Roger here from What's On at DisneyPlus.com. A quick news update for you guys on the second season of Loki. I'm also going to be talking about some major changes at Disney and much more. But before we go any further, make sure you do hit that subscribe button to keep up with the latest Disney Plus news. So Disney has released the very first trailer for the upcoming second season of Loki, which arrives on Disney Plus on October the 6th. So there'll be new episodes dropping weekly on this one. Um, the trailer looks fantastic. I am so excited about this series, Loki is one of my favorite shows on Disney Plus. I think it's fantastic. And this season just looks like it's going to be even more craziness. Definitely kind of exploring the multiverse and kind of jumping around a little bit, which obviously sets up other things that are going on within the MCU. And I think um, this show seems to do it really well. The first season did definitely. I mean, it was actually the highest uh, viewed Disney Plus show in terms of Marvel, which is, is just great. Um, yeah, the trailer just looks so good. I mean, I can't believe it's been um, almost a year since D23 where we got to see a little bit of um, some bits of it. The trailer definitely just made me even more excited about it. New characters, just more of the same. Just more, Loki's just, there's something about the character and you know the the mischief side of him but he's also trying to save the world from you know being destroyed it just looks really 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 good i i can't wait to see what happens with this one a lot of pressure on this series because you know we've seen over the um, you know with the kind of the backlash to secret invasion there's a lot of um, pressure i feel like on this if this one hits the hits it then it will help with just kind of boosting up the mc i definitely feel low-key this you know, big stars, you've got Owen Wilson in here. It, it just, I, to me, it just looks fantastic. So let me know, are you excited about the second season of Loki? Let me know in the comments below. Disney's also released a teaser trailer for the upcoming documentary series, NCT 127, The Lost Boys, which is a four part series about the K-pop pop band. And it's gonna be following them as they go around the world on a tour. Um, the nine members of the group will each have their own stories talked about, including their childhood and their feelings about their international success and basically each episode will focus on two to three uh, members of the team there'll be two episodes dropping on august the 30th and then another two episodes dropping the week later on september the 6th obviously with the uh, k-pop documentary stuff um so far it has been confirmed for asia and in australia and new zealand not been officially confirmed yet for america um, but i suspect it will do most of the k-pop stuff does tend to um, be global but hopefully we get confirmation pretty soon on that one. But yeah, so this one definitely looks interesting. I'll be honest, I have never seen or heard of this group until the announcement um, come along. But it's always nice to have, you know, music um, just broadened to have, watch something a little bit different. But let me know, are you excited about watching this documentary? Let me know in the comments below. Moving on from there, let's now talk about some big Disney news, which has some big effects if things go the way they could do. Because over the weekend, Puck News reported that Tom Staggs and Kevin Mayer are going to be kind of returning to Disney to do some consulting with Bob Iger about the future of linear and streaming business. Um, now, these guys are very fundamentally huge Disney um, employees. They used to work at Disney at a major level. Um, Tom Staggs was the COO. He was also the chief financial officer. He was in charge of the parks. And he was set to become um, a big player within Disney, but um, he got passed over for the big job with Kevin Mayer. He is the architect really of Disney Plus. He was um, right in charge of the streaming technology. He's also been behind um, and dealing with lots of the purchases that Disney have made over the years, including Pixar, Lucasfilm, 20th Century Studios, and BamTech, which is basically Disney streaming. So he is a huge part of Disney streaming and he has since gone on after leaving Disney a few years ago. He's gone on to run TikTok. He's also worked for Diaz, the streaming service. And now the two of them together are actually sort of run Candle Media, uh, which has brought out Hello Sunshine, which um, has created shows like Tiny Beautiful Things for Disney Plus and Hulu. They've also um, got shows for Moonbug like Coco Melon A. They've created a billion dollar business just on that. So now there is a lot of talk with them being brought in as consultants of whether or not this is the start of maybe getting them back into Disney full time. Um, to essentially could these guys be the new future leaders of Disney um, there's a very strong possibility these guys have worked at Disney for a long time and they've gone off and done been successful elsewhere and there is obviously some issues of whether or not Disney might need to buy out big parts of uh, Candle Media to kind of bring them in that might be a way or 
that's a, that's a big issue that they might have to deal with. There was rumors of them maybe potentially coming back to Disney just before Chapek was removed because they were looking at maybe bringing those guys back to run Disney if Bob Iger wouldn't do it, but that would have required them to have gone out and maybe acquired Candle or made a lot of noise, which they didn't really want to do with Chapek. So in the end, they kind of got Bob Iger back. Now, these guys are very well known within the Disney community. They have been part of Disney for years. They are very successful. Um, Kevin Mayer especially really knows his stuff with streaming. And yeah, that's if they want to push forward with the ideas of what they're going to be doing with ESPN and Disney, these two guys are going to be great. So this is basically going to be running at the minute. They don't actually technically work for Disney. They're just consulting. So they will be basically being paid by Disney to give them advice and stuff. So this could be a big shift. Um, obviously, Bob Iger, when he came back, said that he was looking for a replacement to um, replace him within two years. He's already extended his contract another two years. And a big part of this is that he eventually is going to need to pass the company off. He's not been very good at this in the past. He's... A, he put it back and put it back and put it back and put it back. And then when he did pick somebody, Chapek kind of basically screwed the company up. So there's a lot of pressure on him. He, you know, he needs to retire soon because he's he's approaching 75 when his contract runs out. So that's, that's a big issue. But yeah, so I mean, to be honest, if you're going to be bringing back in some guys, bringing back in the guy that was behind the launch of Disney Plus and been behind so many of the major things at Disney, it seems like a good idea. And I think just getting, sometimes as well, just getting outside thoughts and outside things from outside of the bubble can help. You know, if they're trying to work out what it was, and obviously Iger has faith in these guys. There was a great um, thing in his autobiography about these guys. So that's, it, it, it's going to be a big news. I wouldn't be at all surprised if something is announced with regards to them coming back. Maybe at some point it could happen. The fact that they're now consulting, something is going on. So we're just going to have to keep an eye out for this one. But yeah, so big news within Disney. Moving on from there, let's now talk about our comment of the day. So Bear Bear said, I think spreading out films by delaying them later this year or to next year is a good idea. Releasing films such as Indiana Jones 5, Mission Impossible 7, Haunted Mansion, Elemental, Barbie and Oppenheimer within weeks of each other has caused several films, including Barbie, to make less money than they might have had there been less competition if they can spread out the blockbusters then these films might make more money at the box office. So obviously this is in reference to Sony starting to um, delay some films. Disney has also done something similar as well. They've already pushed back poor things. When you look at this summer in terms of blockbusters, there is a general feeling of something's not been hidden right. Something has not been working. Something is kind of just, we are not back to the heyday of pre-pandemic where, you know, Disney were putting out movies and everything was hitting a billion. We are just not hitting that now. It's so far this year, Super Mario Brothers is the only film to have hit a billion. I suspect Barbie is going to be doing the same thing. The thing is with Barbie, nobody really anticipated the success of this film at the level it is at and the success that this um, sort of Barbie Heimer weekend has had. It was a cultural phenomenon that is unlike we've ever seen and we might never see anything like this again. This is not a normal thing that happens. People going into cinemas in the, the amount that they have been going and doing this double feature thing. This is an event. This is something special. This is things that like Endgame, like the, the minion um, with all the kids turning up in suit. Things like this don't happen very often and when they do, they're very successful, but you cannot re replicate it. You can't expect this to happen all the time. This is a, Barbie's just hit something right now and it's working. Whether or not it's something fresh and original, that could be part of it. But also just, yeah, as you say, releasing so many films back to back to back has caused a, just a, just, just too much choice. And also, every, you know, there's a cost of living crisis going on and it doesn't get mentioned enough about the fact of going to the cinema costs a lot of money and therefore trying to get in audiences that maybe don't go so often, families, um, you know, older people, but also just getting even teenagers in because some, you know, teenagers don't even go to cinema the same way that they used to. Um, there's always a core audience that goes every single week, but that has been reduced. You know, we, you know, there's been a lot of flops this summer and, you know, Disney's had some and some of them have done a bit better than others. Um, some have, have clawed back in a little bit more money. You know, like Little Mermaid and Elemental seem to have done pretty well in kind of, I'm at least getting into like make, breaking even, making money, but they're not big blowout movies that they would have been. And I think the expectations for movies to always hit a billion dollars is incorrect. And it's just something that's gonna become even less likely to happen in the future. And so budgets on films will have to come down. I do think spreading them out makes sense. I mean, you know, it's like 
with Mission Impossible, you know, that one just I had one week and then it was gone because it was followed by Barbie and they lost all of the big screens and kind of, in some ways, it's funny how like Mission Impossible and like Fast and Furious have both been, you know, underwhelming in terms of box office, but Disney gets all the heat because they have a movie like Indiana Jones, which does which does the same amount of money as those ones, but it, it doesn't fit the story on the internet of, you know, like Universal gets a pass on that one. Or for example, that like mermaid film, like I can't even remember what it was, Teenage Kraken, whatever it was, absolutely bombed worse than um, Elemental, but that one seems to have just got pa a pass by everyone. And go, oh yes, that, well we weren't, that's the difference. That's, um, you know, Universal are amazing because of Super Mario, but their next film by DreamWorks, you know, didn't do anything. It was so. It's, it's sometimes it kind of the social media and everything can kind of wrap up in a in a story and excitement because it's more easier. But yeah, I do feel like they you know movies do need a little bit more spread out. I think you know there's always that kind of thing of having some films that are a little bit different. You could have a horror movie and a family film going up on the same day or within a week of each other, and they're not really crossing over their audience. But if you have like in the, summer's always been packed full of movies. But having just big ones, just one after another, I think it's like with Haunted Mansion. Yeah, in hindsight, I suspect Disney, if they'd known now what they knew, but you know, if everyone knew about Barbie in in the past and was going, oh yeah, that's going to be a billion dollar movie, we might want to stay clear of that. You know, Mission Impossible might have gone a bit earlier. Or there would have been some moves with it in all of this, but um, yeah, unfortunately, you know, no one would have really have seen what's happened with this one coming. Um, but yeah, so I think that's it. And I do feel spreading some of the films out. I think, you know, you know, the studios also have been like, they held a few of those films from the pandemic. There's also a lot of costs from the pandemic wrapped up in these films that a lot of people don't necessarily understand of why the budgets on these films are so much higher because they had to go for a lot more testing, a lot more, um, they were filming for longer, they had to go through protocols. There was a lot of costs involved in these ones. Like Mission Impossible was definitely one that suffered from massive over costs because of the pandemic of filming it. And I'm going to keep stop, keep paying people, stopping, keep paying, and that, and now all the films have kind of struggled with that one. But I think we're definitely going to see smaller budgets on films, less big epic. You know, that's not necessarily a bad thing. I think some of the films maybe have got a little bit carried away with kind of just just spending money because they thought everything was going to be a billion, two billion dollar movie. And I think this year is just whack them all and said like, nope, you need to be more uh, more sensible. But there we go, that was a little bit of a rant, but nevertheless, let me know what you think of all of this in today's um, comp news and stuff in the comments below. Go check us out over at whatsondisneyplus.com. Like, follow, and subscribe, and I shall see you guys soon. Laters.